Hey, this is Ryan from 60 Cycle Hunt, the guitar podcast, and today I'm going to compare the Squire Bullet Mustang to the Epiphone Les Paul SL. Uh, both these guitars are extremely budget-friendly, with the Squire coming in at $150 new and the Epiphone coming in at $99 brand new. So this is like as cheap as they come as far as playable electric guitars go. I know there's things from other brands out there that get a little cheaper, but you're not going to find a lot of playable guitars under this price range. It's just ridiculous. Let's cover some of the basic design differences between these two guitars before we get into the nitty-gritty and you know whether or not one is viable or not viable or playable or not playable. I mean, it's all pretty subjective, but we'll get into that. So the Squire has two humbucker pickups in it. Uh, they test in around 9 and 9.7, 9 9.6, somewhere in there. It's a pretty normal range for a humbucker. I think the humbuckers in this thing just, they sound just fine. There's really no reason to swap them out unless you're looking for something really specific, but then you're not going to find that in most guitars if you have a specific taste in pickups that you're trying to get with this with this specific guitar. The Epiphone comes with two single coil pickups, uh, and they test around 5.4, 5.5, five, five, somewhere in there, which is also very standard for single coil pickups. Uh, the thing you're going to discover with the Epiphone is that the bridge pickup is extremely bright, and very twangy. So if you're looking for a really twangy electric guitar out of the box for 99 bucks, you're going to get it with this guy. If you don't want a bright twangy bridge, you're going to need to change that pickup. It's just how it goes. Like this guitar, the pickups are so middle of the road and so just kind of like average that you can make them work for most of what you're going to do. This is a very specific flavor, and that's not a bad thing, but it's definitely a personal preference sort of thing. Uh, next up, let's talk about the bridge hardware. The Squire has your typical uh, Fender hardtail Strat style bridge on it that allows you to adjust the intonation and the action of every single string at nauseum. You could really just dial it in exactly how you want with this bridge. It is a cheap piece of metal bridge. There's uh, you know, nothing fantastic about this bridge as far as hard, hardtail strap bridges go, but it's completely functional. Uh, there's nothing about it so far that's broken strings for me uh, or prevented me from having the guitar in tune or intonated or have the action set up the way I like it. Uh, it's just, you know, you can visually tell when you're close up on it, like, oh, this is a cheap chrome dipped piece of junk metal and it's not the, uh, you know, you don't have the hard edges that you get on uh, a higher quality bridge. This guy has a Gibson style wraparound stop tail bridge on it, which really doesn't have a lot of adjustment when it comes to intonation or action. You get two points of contact here, each post. You can adjust the action by adjusting each post up or down, which means that you're not getting a ton of dialability in the middle of the bridge. Like the middle is kind of just at terms with whatever's going on around it. Same thing for the intonation. There's a screw on the back side of each post that allows you to shift the bridge around a little bit to adjust intonation. Once again, in the middle of the bridge, uh, you're gonna suffer a little bit if you know you need to tweak like your G or your D string or something like that. It's kind of just like, you set it and accept the average which is not that big of a deal. It's honestly really close to intonation, and the action really is not that big of a deal, honestly. Uh, so that side of the hardware with these guitars, I don't think there's really any reason to change it out or swap it unless you really have a strong personal preference. Uh, I might tweak this thing to have a tremolo on it at some point, so I might seek out a stop tail bridge that will work better with like a Bigsby or like a Tisco style uh, tremolo on it. Uh, let's talk about tuners. The Squire has these very modern and very effective closed back style tuners. I've had zero problems with the tuners on the Squire. It just stays in tune. It doesn't slip tune or anything like that. It's a smooth, modern feel on these tuners. There's no reason you'd ever need to change them. Even if you have certain specific things that you like, like you don't need to change them. If you want locking tuners on here, that's a personal preference. It doesn't need them. They work great. The Epiphone, on the other hand, has these very cheap import style tuners that I'm still surprised 
anyone uses on any guitars, they must have just crates of these things in the Chinese factory or Korean factory. Oh, it says made in China on there. Uh, they just must have crates of these things that they're going to be clearing out for decades because they're not a good tuner. And these tuners need to be replaced with this guitar if it's going to be a giggable guitar. You could play around with it at home and just accept like, oh, every other song, every, you know, 10 minutes, I'm going to have to tweak the tuning on this thing. But if you're going to play it out, you got to change the tuners. It's just what it comes down to. So you're taking a $99 guitar and in reality, you've got to throw some money at it uh, to make it giggable which will make it around the same cost as the Squire over here. So that's a big negative in my book. And then there's also the issue with the bridge pickup. If it's not your flavor, you're going to end up changing that. So changing those two things already puts you beyond the cost of the Squire. Something to think about. Let's talk about colors, just the aesthetics of it. I mean, aesthetics go a long way with how you feel about an instrument, whether you feel like choosing it for a live performance versus another guitar that you have around. Uh, the Mustang, it's, you know, the, the layout of it, the pickguard controls, the pickguard cut and whatnot is very standard, but let's talk about the colors. It only comes in two colors. And honestly, I think they're the two worst colors for an electric guitar, my least favorite anyways. Black, which is just so boring to me. I'm so done with black guitars with a white pit guard. And then this dark metallic blue, which is, I mean, it's all right, but it's just so boring to me. I wish this guitar came in a few different colors, even if it came in white. I would prefer that. I love this guitar in white. If it came in a cool, like, you know, like seafoam green, almost like the turquoise on here, that would be fantastic. There's just a lot of other colors out there that this guitar could come in that would be more exciting. So it's a little bit limiting just having two colors. The Epiphone SL comes in a rainbow of colors. There's so many colors available. Honestly, the appearance of it is one of the huge benefits of the Epiphone SL. It just has a really cool look. I love the pickguard cut. It, you know, hints back at the original pickguards from Melody Makers with this, you know, pickguard cut that comes out around the single coil pickup, this big blob down here. There's something just very vintage and funky about it that I love. I love the look of this thing. And I love all the colors it comes in. There's so many. Uh, I honestly kind of am kicking myself. I kind of wish I'd got the yellow one, but I do like the turquoise. So I was definitely between those two colors, but I thought the turquoise would look better in these videos. So I hope you appreciate it, viewing audience. Uh, so yeah, I think the aesthetics with this thing are great. They're totally great. Let's talk about probably the most important part of these guitars is the neck and the fret work. Before I cover the SL, I'm gonna turn to the other camera and I'm going to say in a very serious tone that I think the Squire Bullet Mustang is the best sub $200 guitar I've ever played, let alone owned. This thing just plays fantastic. The action can be set super low and super fast. The neck is very comfortable in my hand and the fretwork on the edges is just fine. I would have no problem with this fretwork if it came on a $300 guitar. If it came on a $400 guitar, I'm talking, you know, like if it came on Mexican made fenders, I'd be fine with this fretwork. There's no dead spots across the fretboard. I have the action set to my personal preference. It could be lower, and I haven't found any dead spots on it. So I can't sing the praises of the Squire Bull Bullet Mustang enough. It's just a fantastic playing guitar and it's fun to play the way the neck and the frets are it's completely giggable out of the box the pickups too it's just a giggable guitar for $150 so that's my piece with the Squire Bolt and Mustang the Epiphone on the other hand uh, the neck is straight enough the fretwork on the edges is just fine. I have no problem with it. I, th I think a similar assessment to the Squire is that 
I wouldn't notice if this was a fretwork on, you know, say a $500 level up a phone or something like that. There's nothing distracting about the sharpness of the edges or anything like that. I've played cheap guitars that have much worse fret dressing than these two guitars. But the frets themselves are not as level as the Mustang. There's a lot of dead spots when I've got this set to a similar action as the Mustang, which is with the, uh, I think it's about an eighth of an inch is what I measured the other day, about an eighth of an inch in between the string and the fret on the 12th fret is right around where I like my action. And there's just a lot of buzzing, a lot of buzz outs that I have to work around and you know, kind of just accept as the character of this guitar. So it's a lot less usable, in my opinion, as a stage guitar, as a gigable guitar, which is a super bummer because it looks so cool. And I love the way it looks. Uh, I think this is going to be an excuse for me to buy some basic tools and try my hand at doing some fret leveling and some fret dressing to see what I can do. Uh, try not to mess it up too hard, but get it just a little bit more playable at the action that I like. It's not super, super fast, but... I like to be able to go a little bit fast if I want to, you know? Uh, so let's summarize the issues with this guitar. The tuners absolutely need to be swapped out if you're going to gig with this thing. It's just not even a question. Like, you just have to do it. The bridge pickup, it's a lot of personal taste there. If you're looking for bright and twangy, go for it. If you're not, know that you're going to need to change that bridge pickup. I'm personally probably going to leave it just to keep the character of this guitar, and I'll probably swap out the neck pickup to do something fun and funky. I don't know what yet, but I'm planning on doing a bunch of mods to this guitar, and like I said, I'm going to try to work on some fret dressing and leveling with this thing and try my hand at it, see what I can do. Uh, I mean, it's really buyer beware. It's 99 bucks that's kind of disposable cash as far as guitars go. So if you're looking for something that's going to look cool on the wall and you'll kick it around the house, yeah, sure. If you're looking for something gigable, it's just it's going to take a bunch of work. That's that's your personal choice. That's your time sacrifice and your resource sacrifice. Uh, as far as your guitar for a new player or someone moving from acoustic to electric for the first time, I can completely recommend the Squire. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Go buy the Squire Bolt Mustang. It's a great playing guitar, ready to go. It's completely gigable and playable. This guitar, I cannot recommend it for a new player or for someone moving to electric for the first time from acoustic or something like that. There's just too many quality control issues and hardware issues that get in the way of this being a rewarding interaction with an electric guitar if you're brand new to electric guitar if you're experienced with electric guitar and you know how to work on them and get them set up just how you like knock yourself out i guess i can't tell you what to buy and what not to buy i mean i bought it i'm gonna keep it around i'm gonna mess with it have fun all right well thanks for watching guys uh sorry i didn't do any playing in this one you know actually i'll do a little bit here at the end where i show off the dead spots in this and then run through the mustang a little bit to show that there aren't dead spots thanks for watching please subscribe uh, i'll see you around on the internet all right let's find some of the buzzies on the neck of the epiphone sl here i know there's one for sure up here on the second fret of the d string you can hear it just buzzes out a little bit It's not great. The action really honestly isn't even that super low. There's some kind of fret issue going on there. I've tweaked with the uh, with the truss rod a bit to try to even out issues like that, but it's just a little bit of hair on that. And then I think we're mostly clear for most of the neck through here, but then when you get past the 12th fret, <laughs> so some definite buzzies on the high frets here on the high strings. 
was bad on the low strings, I could fix that by adjusting the action a little higher, but I prefer to have the action at the level it is, and I'd rather try to fix those frets that are causing the issue. Up here, adjusting the truss really isn't going to give me that much return. Not like up here where there's something definitely going on with that fret, but a little bit of truss tweak would even it out, but then I'd suffer on the rest of the neck uh, for the kind of action that I like to have on a neck. So that's a bit of a bummer. Let's throw on the Mustang and you can see that it doesn't have those issues. All right, the Mustang. Let's check out and see if there's any buzzies on here. There's that D second fret, no buzzy on there, like the Epiphone. There's honestly no fret buzz at all anywhere on this fretboard as far as I've found. If it buzzes out, it was because I wasn't playing right and I, <laughs> and I fudged the note or whatever. But on the SL, there's definite spots where no matter what I'm doing with my finger, as far as applying pressure or rolling on or off the note, it just buzzes. So that's not great. That's honestly, that and the tuners are the big deal between this guitar and the SL. So thanks for watching. Like I said, please subscribe.